Hello and welcome to Lords in the NatWest T20 blast between Middlesex and the Kent Spitfires in front of a wholesome crowd here at the home of English cricket. Middlesex won the toss and elected to bat. Let's see how they got on. Middlesex got off the mark quickly. Dawid Milan hitting a couple of fours in the first over to give the hosts the fast start they were looking for as they look to recover from defeat in their opening T20 match of the season in Bristol a couple of weeks ago. Paul Sterling joined the party with this maximum in the third over. But the early breakthrough came for Kent as Milan was caught behind off the bowling of Stevens in the fourth over. That brought Compton in. Still, the boundaries persisted at pace, with Sterling continuing to go big and Compton hitting a four as well. Sadly, Compton's stay at the crease did not last long. He holed out to Bell Drummond for just five runs. But this is when Middlesex started to dominate. In came Owen Morgan, the England one-day captain returning to domestic action after his stint in the IPL. And alongside Paul Sterling, these two produced magic. Sixes raining into the Lord's crowd with regularity and clever fours like that as well. Relentless boundary hitting from the pairing, and in the eighth and ninth overs, they plundered 33 runs, the Kent attack being severely punished at the home of cricket. Wonderful shot-making to all corners of this famous ground, the 13,500 strong crowd being royally entertained in northwest London. Irishman Paul Sterling reached his half-century in the ninth over as he nerdled Haggart's bowling away. A fine showing from Sterling as he looked to chase down his personal T20 best of 82. He showed no signs of slowing down this evening. Morgan continued to show his undoubted ability to score runs quickly, but it was Sterling who continued to be the star of the show. A ferocious display from the 24-year-old who hit seven maximums and six fours on his way to 90 runs particularly favoured the leg side with sixes continuing to head over into that favoured area of cow corner. Middlesex were really accelerating away at pace and Kent were struggling to slow down the progress of this highly impressive pairing. A hugely entertaining display for the home crowd. It somehow felt fitting that Sterling was to be caught over in the leg side deep. Unable to clear the ropes this time and Bell Drummond the man to catch him. But a hugely effective innings and a partnership with Morgan that put the hosts in the driving seat. Morgan and Sterling putting on 104 from 49 deliveries for the third wicket stand. Owen Morgan kept his foot on the gas as Middlesex tried to follow Sterling's lead. The England one-day captain then reached his half-century. A fine knock from Morgan who reaffirmed his credentials in this format of the game. But then Morgan was gone, just two overs after Sterling, trying to go big. He holed out to Blake at long off, just two balls after reaching his 50. A good catch from Blake in the fading Lord Sunshine. After Morgan went, things slowed up for Middlesex with only 22 runs coming from the next 22 balls. The final wicket was Burns as he was clean bowled by Coles in the penultimate over. A fantastic batting display from the home side. The stars of the show clearly being Paul Sterling and Owen Morgan as they put on that hugely impressive and entertaining partnership. Sterling in particular at his destructive best, smashing the ball to all corners of the ground. So at the end of their 20 overs, Middlesex racked up an impressive score of 205 for five. Paul Sterling, the star of the show with 90 off 50 balls, a half century from the captain, Owen Morgan. A tough old challenge for the Kent Spitfires. Here's their reply. Kent needed a fast start. They didn't exactly get that, hitting just eight runs from the first two overs. Bell Drummond did hit this boundary, but he was gone in the third over. A low skidding delivery from Roland Jones, catching Bell Drummond square on the pads. An easy decision for the umpire. Just two balls later, and Denley was gone. Clean bowled by the impressive Stephen Finn. Two early wickets for Kent. They needed a pairing to steady the ship. Coles and Northeast were able to hit some boundaries, but it was at a fairly slow pace. The Middlesex bowling attack keeping things relatively tight, and these boundaries were rare moments of joy for Kent as they limped towards 51 for two after eight overs, well behind the required run rate. Captain Sam Northeast sensing the responsibility to take on the scoring mantle, then tried to go too big as he sent one high into the night sky. Abbott was there to take the solid catch. Bowler James Franklin was looking hugely impressive. He bowled out Coles the very next delivery. Kent four down. Franklin was on a hat trick. With the Lord's crowd behind him, he steamed in to try and take the wicket of Billings, but the batsman winning this particular battle, able to steer the ball away safely. Franklin wasn't to be denied for too long, though. In fact, just three balls later, he was celebrating again. Stevens holding out to Milan. In Franklin's next over, he remarkably was able to carve himself another hat-trick chance. Firstly, he got the wicket of the dangerous Blake, again caught by Milan. 
And then Billings was also sent packing, again trying to get the run scoring going. Abbott taking his second catch of the innings. It meant Franklin was able to try for another hat-trick, but it ended rather tamely this time. A wide ball sent down. Still, the bowler able to see the funny side as he had a fifer this innings. Paul Sterling then strengthened his case for man of the match. After his fine knock of 90, he was then taking wickets, able to get Haggett clean bowled. And then it was the turn of the debutant, 22-year-old Australian Nathan Souter wrapping the match up with a flourish from Middlesex. Firstly, he took the wicket of Claydon, and then the wicketkeeper was involved again in the final wicket. Country clipping the ball and a fine catch. So Middlesex able to secure their first NatWest T20 Blast win of the summer and in fine style too, Franklin leading the players off after his excellent bowling display where he took five wickets, but the job of the Middlesex bowlers was made much easier by the home side's devastating batting display led by man of the match Sterling who hit a supreme 90 runs. Kent in response couldn't really get going. Sam Northeast top scoring with 20 runs, but they never looked in the game. Middlesex winning by 115 runs. Today was one of those days where everything came off. Paul Sterling at the top of the order was magnificent. Myself and him managed to build quite well in the middle uh, of the innings and then uh, Bernsey and Frankie finished it off at the end. And I mean, the guys were as aggressive with the ball as I've ever seen them. So the Kent Spitfires bowled out for 90 or 14.4 overs and suffering their first defeat of the NatWest T20 Blast season. Middlesex winning by an impressive 115 runs, thanks in no small part to James Franken, who finished with figures of 5 for 21 off his four overs. Now the next time that the Middlesex team are back here playing in the NatWest T20 Blast at Lords is on June the 18th against Hampshire. You can get your tickets on the Lords website. £20 a ticket is definitely worth £20. It's an enormous amount of fun. And we look forward to seeing you next time here at Lords.